Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, make sure to check out some of the older content where I cover vehicles similar to this one and other luxury vehicles as well. As always guys, this week's video is all about the sweetheart of a car right behind me, the Porsche Cayman GT4. I've driven Caymans before. The best one before driving this one has been the Porsche Cayman GTS but this right behind me is a sweetheart of a driver's car. I wanna show you guys a little bit of a deep dive on this car and show you guys why this car still retains this particular vehicle right here behind me is a 2020. I wanna tell you guys and show you as to why it still retains its value after almost four years of being initially sold. As always, I'm gonna be going over the exterior design, the interior, the cargo, the engine, and then of course, most importantly on this particular car, driving impressions. So guys, let's strap in and take a look. So what makes the Cayman GT4 different than a regular Cayman? Let's get started right from the front. We can see right here, it's got a different front bumper and we see that there's larger air intakes over here, a larger intake over there, and of course we have a larger front lip as well with a GT4 denomination there in the front. The headlights are the same, but then you have also something that is very common amongst GT cars, this extra heat extractor that allows some of the heat to actually dissipate from here or it's just for better air management as well. This particular GT4 has some decals which I personally prefer or I actually like quite a bit which is this line right up against the hood. The side of the actual front bumper you have these sort of fins over here and that's also for air management so when it goes in through here it basically allows the air to circulate around the wheels as well. And we also have this side marker as well. So you have these GT wheels also in the front. They're basically wrapped in a Pilot Sport Cup 2s. We do see a slightly different profile. You guys can see that there's the rear sort of air vent over there. And of course, you see that massive wing that basically aids for downforce. Of course, the taillights are the same, but then you have this little sort of like ducktail spoiler and then moving towards the bottom we get to see a different diffuser alongside with the exhaust outlets as well and this definitely helps with air management as well in terms of downforce all in all this vehicle is a phenomenal driver's car and i'll be getting more into that as i get into the driving impressions so now let's get inside the gt4 now i'm gonna give you guys a fair warning this is not sort of like a a daily drivable car with uh, extremely comfortable amenities. It's not extremely tech advanced, let's just say. It's, it's purely a driver's car. That's the key right there. Let's give it a unlock. You get some Alcantara over here, leather on the top, and then you get your window switches, side view mirror switches. A uh, little bit of storage over here, nothing too great. Uh, the grab handles over here are also wrapped in Alcantara. Mm -hmm. And then you do have a sort of movable little storage cubby over here as well. So the cool thing is that it allows you to open it up and then close it up. So these are the carbon back racing seats. It doesn't have much adjustability as you guys can see over here. But once you're in these seats, you're super snug, you're super comfortable. I sat inside of them and yes, it's a little bit tough because of this very high lower side bolster to get inside but once you're inside it's quite comfortable to be honest i, I can't tell you guys how this feels in uh, long drives but from a uh, driver's perspective or drivability perspective it definitely keeps you in place but it also looks extremely nice of course so these are the uh, highly sought after racing seats for the gt4 and a lot of people say that if you want to retain a higher value on your gt4 these are the seats to go for. Naturally, this is the one before they came out with a PDK. So you got three pedals over there. In my opinion, I'd go for the manual, of course. You have some Alcantara over here, your light switches as well. The traditional Porsche style 
ignition key area on the left hand side of the steering wheel we have an alcantara steering wheel straight ahead of us extremely simple layout you got a three spoke not super thick wheel over here so just big enough you know to feel comfortable to wrap your hands around and then of course we don't have any controls around here which makes it very driver focused in my opinion uh, you do have surprisingly cruise control over here your gauge cluster is all fully analog except for one side you guys will see over here that you have a digital side over here you have your analog tachometer and then you have your analog speedometer over there not much in terms of adjustability for the gauge cluster this is not a tech heavy type of vehicle it's all about the driver experience you have a small screen over here i'll show you guys the size of the screen it is touch you have the possibility of uh, controlling through buttons for example you have a few buttons over here that bring you to different menu items you have a few knobs for the volume and the tuning and then your hvac controls sit right here at the bottom very simple straightforward nothing too complicated right there in front of you i personally like it quite a bit and then you have your porsche clock over here it's part of the uh, chrono package i guess or it comes standard with the chrono package and then this is the best thing of all right here a short throw manual transmission with six speeds can't get any better than this of course you have a few extra buttons over here i still don't like the fact that porsche you know doesn't do anything with some of the blank buttons they just keep it as is so i'm not a big fan of that but surprisingly you do have a auto start stop and the cool thing is that it does allow you to do an auto blip as well for the transmission so if you're driving in traffic it'll be much better and much more convenient for you as well. ESC off, ESC and traction control off, and then a small ashtray over here in the middle where you can put smaller items. And then finally, you do have a small, somewhat usable middle compartment with a USB-A plug over there. It's not too deep, but it allows you to put very small items in there. Your door release is not an actual lever or anything. It's a strap that, as you guys can see, you just basically pull on that and it allows you to open the door. And that's the exhaust button like I mentioned before. You guys can hear the difference there, right? This is with the valves closed. Valves open. So all in all, the interior is nothing too special very cozy very snug it's very driver oriented to say the least and i do want to show you finally the last thing here which is the rear no space no nothing for putting any items in the middle between the driver and the passenger and you do have a roll cage here in the rear it's for digital rigidity and for safety reasons as well if you take this to the track super super tight fit in here but at the end of the day if you're looking for a driver's car uh, this is definitely i would say and from an interior design perspective much more driver oriented than the recently reviewed uh, lotus emira the emira i would say is a little bit more dealable than this so taking a look at the trunk of the uh, gt4 you guys will get to see that there's not much in terms of space i'll show you guys the volume numbers on the screen let's not forget guys that the engine actually sits right there so i can't really talk to you guys much about uh, the engine because it does sit over there like i showed you guys before that's the roll cage over there and i'm gonna be showing you guys also the cargo space in the front of the gt4 despite the fact that you don't have much to work with in the back Let's not forget that we also have some space here in the front as well. And I'll show you guys also what the volume is for the front area. And you guys can see that that actually is pretty deep, to be honest. You can easily put, I would say, at least a couple of carry-on bags in the front over there. So given the fact that it is a driver's oriented little race car, you do have some convenience from a uh, cargo perspective. You can put some small items in the back and then a little few larger items here in the front. Like I mentioned before, this is a rear mid-mountain engine, naturally aspirated four liter flat six. It's got a very high uh, red line, but you guys can see here that you have some access points for your, I believe that's the coolant. And then another access point over here 
for your oil as well. So not much else that you can do because it's all covered over here. You know, you have 414 uh, brake horsepower on this. And I'll show you guys some of the other power figures on the Cayman GT4's engine alongside with some of the performance figures as well. I mean, this is not a purely numbers type of vehicle or engine. Uh, it's more about its drivability and feel on the road. All right, guys, so driving the Porsche Cayman GT4. So I've been driving this now for the last maybe 15, 20 minutes. And I can tell you that uh, there's nothing else that I've driven that is like this. The way that this car points when you're when you're whenever you're steering the way that it actually like points and and takes whatever you you uh whatever you actually like try to direct it to i've never felt anything like this 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 car turns like there's no tomorrow and it's extremely visceral and the other thing also is that the the manual transmission is incredible it's absolutely incredible yeah the gear ratios like a lot of reviewers have said are a little bit long but it it's not that bothersome to be honest i mean just the way the short throws feel the way that the clutch feels it's very easy even to uh, get used to as well in terms of the clutch pedal on the on the gear shifts it's incredible i absolutely love this car like there's no tomorrow the steering feel like i said before is super communicative I mean, it's it's very direct. You get to feel everything that's on the road as well. I mean, look, the closest thing that I've driven to this before has been the Lotus Amira or even the Lotus Evora GT, for example. But frankly speaking, there is nothing that feels like this or that I've ever felt like this before. Most likely the GT4 RS is probably on another level, but at the same time, the GT4 RS does not have a manual transmission. The brakes, to be honest, yeah, they do make some noise, but I mean, you know, you're driving a GT4 at the end of the day. You can't expect to have something that doesn't make noise. Yeah, if you bed the brakes in, well enough then you should be okay in terms of the the brakes not making that much noise the suspension yeah i have it right now on um on hard suspension to be honest but it's really not that bad you could daily drive this car but let me tell you one thing if you're gonna daily drive this car you're always gonna want to speed you're always gonna want to take turns super quickly you're probably gonna get tickets in it and it's not the fastest car out there but it's the most communicative car i've ever been in and it's it's enjoyable it's just you're, you're so ingrained into the drive itself because you feel absolutely everything you feel that everything that comes through the steering wheel you feel everything that comes through the seat the way that the car communicates with you the way that it steers wherever you point it to it actually goes it's it's incredible i can only imagine that this pro this car probably when you're driving in the rain it's gonna be you know a little bit tough but at the same time you'll know exactly what's going on with the car in terms of suspension yeah, it's not the softest suspension, but it's super compliant. It's very confidence inspiring. The engine itself, it's incredible. Yeah, the power comes at the upper end of the, of the rev range. You got 8,000 revs to play with anyway. Just listen to that. Wow. <laughs> wow, I'm just, I can't say enough about how how much of a smile this brings to my face it's absolutely incredible i just love it man i just absolutely love this thing by far out of all the cars that i've driven this thing is by far the best like i said i right now taking that turn i feel everything coming through the steering wheel i mean this is what a true driver's car is and now i understand why a lot of reviewers raved so much about it everything about this car from a drivability perspective is just perfect i just want to drive this all day long to be honest and you feel like i mean it's small enough to be super maneuverable and it stops in a dime. I swear to God, the brake feel on this is just absolutely incredible. I, Guys, 
I'm gonna say it right here. This is by far, out of all the cars that I've driven, if anybody asks me, this is by far the best driver's car I've, I've, I've driven, period. No, no questions asked, that's it, done. That's my driver's driving impression. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review on the Cayman GT4. Personally, I absolutely loved this vehicle. From a convenience perspective, I wouldn't say it's the best thing, but from a drivability perspective, it's probably the best car that I've driven thus far. This is on a completely different level. Uh, the feel, the fun, the visceralness of the car is just absolutely on another level than anything else I've driven. I can only imagine how much better the GT4 RS must be with those air intakes that sit right behind your ear. I want to give a huge thanks to Aston Martin of Orlando for allowing me to review this gorgeous GT4. Guys, don't miss out your opportunity on this. They do have it up for sale right now. It's on their website. I'm gonna provide a link on, on the description below so you guys can take a look at it and take a look at the remainder of their inventory right now. This is definitely something that I would even be willing to consider right now, to be honest. Thank you very much for all the likes, all the comments. Make sure to share some of the video content that you see from my channel as well. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks, take care, bye-bye.